Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at CPA exam questions that deals with account receivable, allowance for doubtful accounts, and bad debt expense. Those topics are extremely important on the CPA exam as well as your accounting courses because all companies will sell on account. As a result, you will have allowance accounts and bad debt expense. What I'm going to do in this session, start with easy questions, then proceed to more challenging questions. Now, if you are studying for the CPA exam or if you are an accounting student, I strongly suggest you check out my website, farhatlectures.com. Whether you have a CPA review course or not, which you should have a CPA review course, I don't replace this course. What I can do, I can be an alternative or a backup explanation for your CPA review course. I explain the material differently. I would say differently. I'm not going to say better or worse, just differently. And this might be good enough for you to increase your score by 10 to 15 points. So I'll be the most useful addition to your CPA review course. And my resources are created. They are organized to mirror image your CPA review course. So it's easy to go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course. Your risk with me is one month of subscription. If you like it, check it out. If not, you can cancel. Your potential gain is passing the exam. And if not for anything, take a look at my website to determine how well or not well your university doing for the CPA exam. Check out my other accounting courses. Please connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. And on LinkedIn, you will see other people that recommend me after using my resources to pass the exam. Connect with me on YouTube, like this recording, Facebook, and Instagram as well. So let's start with easy questions, then we'll proceed to more difficult questions. So let's start with a straightforward question. And if you don't know this question, then you have to stop and say, I need to understand my account receivable. How are account receivable reported? Account receivable are normally reported at what? Okay. Are they reported at historical cost? Are they reported at fair market value? Are they reported at what? Is it the present value of future cash receipts? Well, this is logical because everything should be reported at present value and account receivable are cash receipts. So you would say, well, this makes sense. Technically, it makes sense. But guess what? Gap says, if you have something for a short period of time, which is two, three months or less than a year, don't worry about the present value of money. Therefore, A is not correct. So we don't report them at the present value, accounts receivable. Now, for dealing with notes receivable, yes, you have to compute their present value. Okay, but accounts, you don't have to do that. Current value plus accrued accrued interest. No, no, we don't report them. So simply put, let's say the current value plus we accrue interest on them. Account receivable, don't accrue interest. Notes accrue interest. B is out. Expected amount to be collected? Yes. This is how we report account receivable. We report account receivable at the expected amount to be collected. So simply put, we are going to have an account receivable and we're going to subtract what's called an allowance. And this is going to give us this expected amount to be receivable. So if we have 10,000 in account receivable and the allowance is 500, it means we can collect, we are expecting to collect 9,500. So this is how account receivable are normally reported expected amount to be collected current value less expected collection costs no it's not so this is the first thing expected amount to be collected let's take a look at this question the allowance for incollectible accounts so simply put this account here the allowance is what is it a deferred charge to expense is it a contra asset account is it a deferred revenue account is it a quasi liability account um I'm not sure if we have anything quasi. Do we have a quasi? No, we don't have quasi. So quasi is out. Uh, we do have deferred revenue. Deferred revenue is unearned revenue. Incollectible are not deferred revenue. So we're down to 50-50. Is it a contra asset or is it a deferred charge expense? It's not a deferred charge expense. Deferred means it's an expense that we're going to take later. It's not. Allowance for doubtful account is a... The allowance is a... Contra asset, it means the balance is credit. This is the balance for the allowance. So on the exam day, if the balance is not giving for the allowance, usually it's giving, you assume it's a credit balance because it's a contra asset. So you need to know this is a contra asset. Let's take a look at this question. Adam Stores estimates the allowance for incollectible at 
2% of account receivable, ending account receivable during 2021, Adam's credit sales and collection were 121 and collection were 134 respectively. What was the balance of account receivable January 1st of $130 in account receivable were written off during 2021 and if the allowance had a balance of 600? So they're looking for the beginning account receivable. That's what they're looking for. So how do you solve this problem? You have to analyze account receivable. Uh, we are looking for the beginning. We know that sales were 121 on credit, 121. Collection were 134. And we wrote off $130. And this is gonna give us our ending balance. So we're not giving the beginning, we're not giving the ending. This is a problem. What, what we are giving though, we are giving the allowance is 600. So simply put, we have an allowance and they're telling you the allowance is 600. And we know that the allowance is 2% of ending account receivable. Well, if we take 600 divided by 0.2% or 2%, 0 0.02, that's gonna give us 30,000. It means account receivable must have been 30,000. So now we have ending. Well, if we have ending, then we just have to find beginning. Now it's easy. No, it's X plus 121,000, the sales on credit, minus the 134 collection, minus the 130, equal to 30,000. Now, if we simplify, simplify, simply put, we're going to have all of this, it's going to end up to be uh, negative 13,130 X minus 13,130 equal to 30,000. X must be 43,130 because 43,130 minus 13,130 will give you an ending balance of 30,000. But the end, they're looking for the beginning balance. The beginning balance is 43,130. You want to be very comfortable with this analyzing the account receivable. Beginning balance plus sales on credit minus collection, minus write-off, equal to ending balance. So they could give you the information in many different ways. They can, usually there's one, there's beginning balance. There's one, two, three, four, five. There's five pieces to, the, to this equation. And they can ask you about four, of, uh, give you the four and ask you about the fifth. So I can give you everything except the collection. I can give you everything except the thing off. I can give you everything except the ending balance. So you have to know how to manipulate this formula. Have have a good understanding about account receivable inside out, inside out. The following informa information relate to Adam's account receivable for 2021. What amount should Adam report for account receivable before allowances at December? Okay, so what's the amount of receivable? Well, we are giving a bunch of balances. You are giving the beginning. So let's see what we have. Yeah, giving account receipt. You are giving the beginning, 857. You are giving credit sales, 3,310,000. You are giving account receivable and written off, 52,000. You are giving collection, 2,980,000. Oh, they're asking for the ending balance. <laughs> As I just said a second ago, you, they give you four and you have to find the fifth. If you do this computation, let's see what we get. If we do that, let's get the calculator and make sure that you, you want to confirm it to see if it's correct. 857 plus 3,310,000 minus 52,000 written off minus 2,980,000 which will give us 1,135,000. The answer is A. So the answer is 1,135,000. Once again, as I just said a second ago, they can give you four and you have to find the fifth. And in this problem, what they did is actually, they kind of, they, they gave you even only three directly and one indirectly. So you have to kind of, we, we had to derive the one indirectly. Let's take a look at this question. Company Adam Company had the following account balances before recording bad debt expense. You are giving account receivable, allowance with a credit balance, credit sales. Adam is considering the following approaches for estimating bad debt. Based on credit sales, 3%. Based on year-end account receivable, 6%. What amount should Adam charge to bad debt expense at the end of 2021 under each method? Under each method. 
Okay, so this is important because the allowance have the allowance math the allowance for doubtful account. You could compute this using two methods, either the credit sales or the year end balances. And this is what I emphasize in my lectures for hatlectures.com. You have to know the difference between the two. So the first they're asking us about the credit sales, then the percentage of account receivable. I'm gonna start with the percentage of sales because it's easy in a sense that it's easy. So if if you're on the exam day and what you do with the percentage of sales, all you have to do, take sales on sales on credit, 1950000 and then multiply it by 0 0.03, and the answer is 58500 58, so, so that's all you have to do. So I can take out A, I can take out D, I'm down to 5050. So all what I did is I took credit sales times the percentage, which is given at 3%. Now, for account receivable, it's a two-step approach, so you have to be very careful with account receivable. You cannot do the same thing with account receivable. And here's what happens if you do the same thing. If you take account receivable, 1,400,000 multiplied by 6%, and let's assume you did this, let's assume you made, that, you made that mistake and you don't understand how it works, and you will choose the wrong answer, which is, I'm assuming it's giving, at, at 84. You would say, well, the answer is 84,000. Wrong. The answer is not 84,000. The answer is 62,000. Now I'm going to explain. When it comes to account receivable, the percentage of sales receivable, this is step one. Step one is to find your balance in the account. So the account receivable method is different than the sales method. Companies could use either or, but you have to know which one are they asking you about. So, so here's what happened here. You have an allowance account, and you already have in the allowance account, you already have 22,000 credit balance. And if the balance is not giving you, assume it's a credit. Now what you have to have, you have to have 84,000. So this 84,000 has to be here. This 84,000 has to be here. This should be the ending balance, okay? And what they're asking you here, not about the ending balance of the allowance, they're asking you about bad debt expense. Notice what the question is about. So to go, to go from 22,000 to 84,000, you need an additional bad debt expense of 62,000. Therefore, the entry will be bad debt expense, 62,000 credit allowance, 62,000. For the sales method, you debit bad debt expense, 58,500 credit allowance, 58,500. Two different methods, therefore, the answer is B. So notice they can easily trick you if you don't really understand the account receivable method. So that's the trick, knowing the difference between the account receivable and the sales method when it comes to estimating bad debt expense and allowance. Once again, if you are a CPA candidate or accounting student, I strongly suggest you check out my website, farhatlectures.com. I can help you. I can help you pass the exam. Put this exam behind you. Therefore, you can focus on your career. My risk is $30. You can try me. You like it. You keep it. Otherwise, you know, you just cancel and move on with your life. If you like it, you have a subscription until you pass. And the faster you do it, the better off you are. Keep your course. Use me in addition to your course. Good luck. Study hard and stay safe.